Manny Pacquiao is best known for two punches. His straight left, the punch that launched his incredible career, and his overhand, the straight left's natural companion and the blow responsible for some of his most stunning moments. Pacquiao's left hand has always been dangerous, so when the Filipino puncher began training under the watchful eye of Freddie Roach, it was the development of his right hand that captured the attention of the boxing world. There is another weapon in Pacquiao's arsenal, however, that rarely garners the respect of fans or opponents, despite keeping the whole Manny Pacquiao machine running smoothly. This is Manny's uppercut, and it truly is a secret weapon to be feared. An uppercut is a tricky thing. It travels, as its name suggests, upward. You'll hear plenty of fighters say that the uppercut leaves you vulnerable when you throw it incorrectly or unwisely, but the inherent risk is counterbalanced by that damnable upward arc, which gives the punch several unique advantages. First, the low angle means that Pacquiao's uppercut often flies to the target all but invisible, especially when the opponent's line of sight is also obstructed by other punches, their own gloves, or Pacquiao's head. See how he slips inside Chris Algieri's jab and fires the uppercut up into his gut before he can circle away or create space. Or here. Oscar De La Hoya is so focused on Pac's constantly moving head and so tightly shielded against the straight left that has been hammering him for five punishing rounds that he is both blind to and wide open for this uppercut to the body. Used this way, the uppercut allows Pacquiao to close the distance with his opponent, do damage, and create opportunities for other punches. The likely reason that Pacquiao's uppercut gets so little attention is that it rarely knocks opponents down or out. This does not, however, make it an ineffective punch. In fact, the mere threat of the uppercut opens up a whole slew of other opportunities for Pacquiao to exploit. Consider this. Miguel Cotto came into his fight with Pacquiao, determined and prepared to stop his vaunted straight left. And early on in the fight, he managed to do so, landing punches of his own while avoiding Pacquiao's using a variety of defensive maneuvers. Then Pacquiao started doing this. Now that uppercut missed, as you can see, but Cotto, fighting out of a low, almost crouching stance, was forced to react by pulling his head back and standing up straight, right in line for the straight left he was so determined to avoid. Picking up on this, Pacquiao began mixing his punches and started to unravel Cotto's defense bit by bit. Cotto found himself in a hopeless conundrum. Slipping or dipping under a straight left could leave him vulnerable to an uppercut, but standing up to avoid the uppercuts made him doubly susceptible to the straight punches. Ultimately, Cotto ended up abandoning his more demanding and diverse defenses in favor of a simple high guard, easier to use but less reliable, ironically leaving him more vulnerable to both uppercuts and straights. Finally, the uppercut is a deadly counterpunch all on its own. Archie Moore called it the ideal defensive punch because that upward trajectory makes it a mean obstacle for an aggressive, forward-oriented opponent. In the first episode of this series, we already looked at Pacquiao's right hook, inarguably his most consistent counter shot. But when opponents stay away from Manny's right, they risk wandering right into you-know-what. If you enjoyed this video, don't miss the other episodes of the Secret Weapons series. You can find links to those installments in the video description. You can also find lots more Mayweather Pacquiao analysis and news on BadLeftHook.com and BloodyElbow.com. I'm Connor Rebush, and thank you for watching.